In this stage we're going to look at the scan and design process for the Serec CAD CAM system. Uh, so the die is removed from the model and needs to be mounted into the scanning cup using, in this case it's an orange uh, plasticine material that holds the die firm. It has a second purpose, this plasticine, in that the scanner can't see it, so you can hide bits of your model as well. So we build it up in a cone shape around the die, and that hides the base of the um, the, ba the base of the die, and just leaves the margin exposed. Now the sharp eye of you will see an arrow marked onto the cup that's just been pointed out there, and that should be where the distal of your preparation is, and that arrow goes to the back of the scanning machine, so it's distal to the distal. And the reason for that is because the machine assumes that the first image that it's going to take is the distal of the prep. So when you load this up onto the um, software package, it'll automatically be labelled the correct way around. So the software is starting up here. Now the scanner, it's worth mentioning, is an um, optical topographical scanner, so it's looking at changes in light reflectance um, to uh, get a three-dimensional image of the uh, prep. So this is um, tapping in a new patient here, so the name, the, uh, the dentist, as it calls it in the system, the scan date and the reference number needs to be tapped in. Um, and then when you've done that, you're allowed to start the design and uh, acquisition process. So now you just tell the software package um, what you'd like to design. So we're going to produce a crown framework. So you select crown framework, select the correct tooth. This box is asking you what material you're scanning. And we're using the cam based material, so it's a scannable die stone. And then you uh, are into the software package and we're just clicking acquire preparation there which makes the scanner go live. So you should see the image come up and you can hear the scanner um, clicking there. Now this is eight scans isn't it? So it's, it's scanning eight times and rotating the die in the little cup on the scanner base. One bit that you didn't see was that we had to focus the scanner there down onto the die to get a nice sharp image. This is just repeated just so that you can see what happens on the scanner, you don't normally do it twice. And we'll show you in a second uh, in close up how the scanner um, captures the image, so you'll see it as though you see it on the monitor now. So this is just one of the scanning processes. Um, it's the most accurate because it takes the pictures all the way around as opposed to just a top view image. So the computer is rendering the uh, three-dimensional version of the preparation and we're picking the material that we intend to make the coping from at the end of the process, although you are allowed to change your mind. Um, you can see on the screen that it's labelled the directions of the coping, so you can see lingual, labial, distal and mesial, and that's why it's quite important to get everything lined up on the scanner before you start. You can fix it in the software later on, but it's quite fiddly. So the first stage is to mark the margin of the intended coping. So you should just be able to work out the wiggly worm of the margin going in. Yep, you double click to start on the edge of the margin, you can see the red dot, and then it's got an automatic margin um, facility, finding facility. So it should recognise the margin. Sometimes it gets a bit stuck, so we just help it out on its way round. It's quite simple to do this. We're turning the model as we go as well so we can see the margin more clearly. Once you've done that, it automatically goes to the ed edit margin mode so you can turn it around and check to see whether it's okay, make sure it's not dropped off anywhere and if it has you can correct it at this stage. I should point out you're doing all this with the mouse aren't you? It's all on the left and right clicking. It's quite straightforward. So we just patched it up there. On to the next stage, that is a warning that if we see any red on our rendered coping um, it might be a bit thin but you can see that this one is good. You see that it's built a collar all the way around. Now this material, uh, eventually, you, you won't want any collar because it should all be covered with the veneering ceramics and you can change that at this stage. We're going to leave it on this example just to keep it simple and we'll trim it back by hand afterwards. This edit that we're doing now is just altering the thickness of the walls of the coping or you can see there the, the occlusal thickness as well and they can be adjusted anywhere between a millimetre and down to 0.3 of a millimetre. It's worth pointing out, at the beginning of the process we did specify a thickness for the coping and that's half a millimetre thick and it actually ends up about 0.7 millimetres thick on the tip of yeah. the coping, doesn't it? And it's very uniform. So we're just picking our milling unit of where we're going to send it to 
and then it will tell us the size of the blank, the block that we need to mill from. So you can just about work out on the screen that it wants a CA12, which is a 12mm block, and then it sets the milling machine up ready for milling, which will be the subject of the next podcast. Okay, job done. Excellent.